All right, at this point then, so I've got my basic app launched. It's in landscape mode. So right now, I want to rotate my virtual device. You can rotate your virtual device from the number pad on your keyboard. You press number 9. There you go, landscape. To bring it back, you press number 7. If it doesn't go back, turn off the num lock and then press 7. 9 and 7. If it's not if it's not obeying, press num lock on the keyboard. 7 and 9. So, if I had a vertical phone and I had set it to landscape, well then obviously, okay, I've got landscape. Great. Um, our particular app is going to be portrait actually. So, as, a, as the example, uh, I wrote on line 19, landscape, but actually I wanted to be portrait. Keep that on portrait. To see the result, then you would go back to command prompt and then emulate it again, but we're fine. I know that it's going to be portrait. So uh, that's been set as a, uh, as a portrait, as a portrait app. Um, sheet number six if we look at our sheets, sheet number six which is Cordova Workflow 2. Here's a few other things that we need to know about. This will make more sense as time goes on, but we'll talk about it here now. Cordova Workflow 2. Right now our, our app runs. It's very basic. It doesn't really do that much. But um, as our projects get more complex, we're going to need to debug them, test them, especially when we start to deal with JavaScript and other logic and databases. What's happening behind the scenes? We need to see. We need to monitor our app. So that's what my workflow number two is talking about. We're going to load this, this, uh, this part of the SDK that will allow us to monitor our app, either virtual, on a virtual device, or on a real device. It'll let us monitor for errors and check status and check the console log. We're still going to be dealing with the console because we're still going to be writing JavaScript. It's still going to be a web page. We're going to need to see the console. So here I'm saying, okay, in our SDK, and this is a little typo, in our SDK folder, we'll, we'll open monitor bat. Well, it's actually Android-SDK on these computers, remember. So if you open up a computer window, go to the local disk C, and open the Android-SDK folder. And then we have a tools folder. And then you're going to see an, an item called monitor.bat. Double-click monitor.bat. I think at home, the very first time you run monitor.bat, you get a pop-up that asks you about sending use statistics to Eclipse, but I don't believe it pops up on our computer. If you do this at home, and you're waiting and waiting and it never pops up, something might have popped up somewhere that said, would you like to send anonymous statistics? You can say yes or no, it doesn't matter. I would say no, just to, so that it doesn't use up resources. But uh, in any event, you get this, the Android device monitor. We've got a bunch of tabs where we can monitor memory and network connections and all that good stuff. I'll mention it in more detail a bit later, but the important things to know about this screen. We've got, a we've got a tab on the left side of devices. On my particular one, I've got a column that says name, and then I've got a little icon here. It's, it's a little virtual device on a monitor, and it's, that's my AVD. That's my virtual device I created earlier. On my particular computer, because I've also set up my real device, there's my Motorola Moto E right there. So it sees that it's online, and it's running Android 5.1. My virtual device, it shows it's running um, 
5.1 right there. So I can have multiple real or virtual devices running. The example of my virtual device up here. These are also all of the apps that are running on the device. com.android.systemui, com.android.defcontainer, com.svox.pico, com.google.process.gapps. And there's mine, com.campus.basic. So every app that is currently running on my real or virtual device would be listed there. And if you if you click on if I click on my virtual device at the top here, it's gonna give me some feedback here. This is the console, basically. If I click on my real device, I don't have my app running, but if I click on my real device, it's going to give me feedback running and running and running. Even if my phone is locked on my desktop, my real desktop right there, it's still doing stuff. Look what it's doing behind the scenes. It keeps saying that something about the battery. It says something else. It's just scrolling by. It's checking the network. Is there still a network connection? Uh, all of that's happening behind the scenes. It's checking the cell towers and all of that. So even though I'm not doing anything on my phone, the phone is still doing something. All our phones are doing something, even if we've just got them in our pocket. So this is a deluge of information. Everything that the phone is doing shows up here. I want to just have it show me what is my app doing. So if you've got this to run on your real device, this will be the same thing. If you've got it to run on your virtual device, this will be the same thing. My instructions here. We're running monitor bat. On the left side, we've got devices. And at the bottom, we've got log cat, the log catalog, the console. Um, we're, running a we're running an app. And then what I want to do is I want to add a filter. I want to filter out all of this information that's zooming by. I want to filter it just to show me the information of my app. So on the left side here, I've got a filter. Save filters. There's no filter, so it's showing me everything. So I'm going to click on my virtual device because my app is running on my virtual device. If you're running on your real device, click on your real device. I clicked on my virtual device. I want a new filter in this filter section. How do you think I add a brand new filter here? plus sign. Click the plus sign, add a new log cat filter. So I can add multiple filters. It asks for us for a name. Let's just call it basic app. This is a filter that will show me the information of my basic app. This can be called anything. This can be called kitty cat. And this will still work. The important thing is, well, what am I monitoring for? I'm monitoring for my particular application name, my particular application's package ID which it shows it to me here on the left, and it's what I have in my config XML file. Question? The little plus sign right there. Plus sign? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So under my application name, I'm going to write my application's package ID, com.campos.basic. Obviously, yours is not called com.campos. It's your last name. The filter name, anything we want application name, it has to be your package name. So if you called yours whatever, make sure you write here whatever. Mine is right there. Com.campusbasic, that's my app name. Click OK. On the left side here it shows you now, well you've got a filter. I've got 3,500 messages with no filter, and then with my current filter I've only got 42 messages. Those 42 messages are everything that my app is currently doing, or has done. I'm going to expand the screen up a little bit here on this divider. Let me back up a little bit. So, a bunch of stuff happened. Loading libraries, binding chromium, attempting removal of handle. 
there was some sort of error there about EGL, there was a warning, Cordova WebView is running. There's no line numbers, unfortunately, but then I've got here lo load URL. Somewhere you might see something that says load URL file Android asset www index. So my index file loaded up. Started running the activity. Resume the activity. Skipped 60 frames. Emulator without GPU emulation detected. I never activated the GPU, remember. So that's just informational. Again, what's going on? Set native JavaScript mode background partial concurrent. It's going to be very verbose. It's going to tell you a lot. Um, here's how much memory it's currently using. 575 kilobytes. Connection type. Mine says that my virtual device is connected to 3G network. And more stuff. Plug-in. Console. Logger, <coughs> console, event receive device ready. We'll see it again, but if you recall from last Thursday, we took a look at the index.js file. The index.js file basically just checks that all of our resources have properly loaded before we can really proceed with our app. At the very end of that JS file, there was a part that says console.log device ready plus ID. So it was putting out to the console a, a ready message, and I found it right there. Info console. That's coming from my JavaScript. Received event. Which one? Device ready. Some other information. Yes. Does anyone also get a lot of errors? A couple of people. Okay. If you do get the errors, uh, don't worry just yet. Let me finish my thought, and then we'll, we'll see about helping you. But um, on uh, this is this monitor dot bat file, this or app, this, uh, d uh, this Android device monitor file, this app, is what we're going to use to monitor the console, to view the console once we start to get more complex with JavaScript. And so my app is currently running. If I click the home button, notice logcat, the console, said paused activities, stop activities, skip some frames, show status icon. So I've gotten back to the home screen. The app is paused. Android automatically pauses an app. It's still active. It's still using some resources. It just paused it. And so an event of pause was fired. We had the event of device ready, we've got the event of pause, and we've got an event of resume. This is how an app is able to still know what you last did when you exited to your home screen, when you exited to go answer an email, when you exited to answer your phone. Then when it takes you back to the app, the event uh, app ready, fires and then we can bring our app back. So if I go back to my apps here, there's my basic app, launch it again, console here says started the activity, resume the activity. So this is always giving us this feedback of, uh, of what the device is doing. And instead of having all of that feedback from a no filter, we've created a filter. If you're getting a bunch of error messages, um, we're going to try to figure that out a little bit later because um, this should be our most basic app. It really doesn't have much that we've done with it. Yes, we edited the, the notepad file and edited a little bit here. Check that everything that we've done here lines up with my handout because if you're getting errors, maybe there's something wrong with your config XML file. So what you can do is check my PDF, make sure that your config file matches it. We'll have, of course, the lab time at the end of the day for much more detailed help, but overall this seems to be working for most people. 
that's going to be part of our workflow. We won't we don't need it too much at the moment. I'm just telling us about it. Once we actually start to get more complex, we're going to definitely go back to this so we can check our console output. Eventually, what will also be useful is this spot here about screenshots. When we're ready to publish our app, we're going to need to submit screenshots of our app. This same Android device monitor can do that for us. Let's check this out for a moment. Monitor app, monitor .bat is running. Either, our, either we're going to emulate or run our app. On the left side, either our virtual or real device will be selected. So I'm saying here, I'm going to click on my virtual device. I've got a bunch of icons on the top here next to the tab. Some are inactive, but one of them is a little camera. Screen capture. Click on screen capture. That connected over to my device. That's what my device is currently displaying. Now it's not a live preview. So if I if I'm here and then I go home, nothing changed. You have to press refresh. And now it refreshed it. And it's this is not active. It doesn't control anything. It's just a screenshot. So the point of this would be at eventually we're gonna need to provide screenshots of our app. People don't want to download an app unless they kind of get a quick preview of it. How does it work? What are its features? And that sort of thing. So if I wanted to create screenshots, you know, I've got refresh there, and I would click save. And this would let us save a dot a high quality dot PNG file. See that device with a date and time. And um, That'll be for later when we're actually creating our store listing and everything. We need, uh, I believe we are required to have four screenshots and other graphical assets. So this is one way to make screenshots. This will also work on your real device. I've been doing it on my emulator, but if you've got a real device plugged in and working, I can click on my real device, open screenshots. There it is. That's what my device currently looks like. It's too big to fit on my screen, but there it is. So if I launch this little test app that I'm working on, I'm working on this app uh, about uh, recipes and such. So you're going to be able to search for ingredients. There will be different recipes. Yes, there's a million other recipe apps out there, but there's only one Victor recipe app. And then for fun and to keep you know, to keep sharp. This is something fun to do on the side. So this is all based on what we're doing in the class. And then eventually when I publish this, I'm going to need to have screenshots and using the Android Device Manager we can create screenshots. That was my workflow number two sheet. Any general questions? I'm going to close that screenshot screen. We don't need to create any screenshots just yet. And I'm going to close the Android device monitor. So we've got a basic app, a template. We could call it a template, of course, but we call it basic. So our basic project is our template. What we're going to do is make a copy of our project in just a moment, and then now start to learn a little bit more about what we can do with Cordova. Remember I said with Cordova we will be able to take a photo, we will be able to check contacts, we will be able to access all of these great features of a real device through JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So we'll do that with a copy of our project.